Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here and welcome to another future match commentary on the channel today. So this is going to be round 5 of my online Discord tournament between Dom Bongo on Tri Brigade Lurlusk, aka Bird Up, uh, versus Entropy1227 on Unchained. And as usual, if you guys do want to play in the next tournament, definitely go ahead and check out the link to the Discord server in the description box below. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting a new ban list sometime soon, uh, sometime in the not too distant future. Granted, we are still finishing up this current tournament's top cut, but that next tournament will happen as soon as that ban list drops, whenever that might be. So let's go ahead and just get started with this match without any further ado. So it looks like Unchained did win the RPS here, and they're going to choose to go first. Somewhat noteworthy because we do see some blind second Unchained builds running around. But the opening hand for Unchained going first is going to be Prison, Sarama, Meister, Rikia, and Chamber. So the hand has a lot of Unchained names in it, so not a lot of defensive traps. But uh, they do have the Skullmeister as a uh, backup option and ways to access the engine. So this hand's definitely good enough to start comboing. And then the... Er, I say comboing in uh, loose quotations there. Uh, but the bird up hand is going to be Cobalt Sparrow, Ash, uh, Sapphire Swallow, Nerval, and Didi Crow. So this hand's also pretty decent. It's a little bit wonky because there's not really the, you know, notorious two card combos being like Turquoise Warbler and Sparrow, for instance. And there's no like Fractal in this hand either. But uh, this hand does have a fair amount of ways to get bodies onto the board and Nerval to just get access to more names if needed. Uh, plus two hand traps as well. So it should be a pretty interesting game one here. Unchained going to start things off in main phase one by activating Abomination's Prison. That's going to grab a search for a copy of Aruha. Aruha is classically very good with the traps, of course. So he's going to set the chamber and then use Aruha in hand. That's going to pop the chamber and then summon the Aruha. And then chamber effect is going to get ashed. And you guys can probably tell by now, but these, are, or these players are most certainly in voice chat rather than actually typing things out. Uh, but we're going to see a normal summon Sarama come down next. That's going to activate to target the uh, chamber, it looks like, which did get Didi Crowed in response. And since the Sarama, of course, does have to set the card successfully from the graveyard to your field in order to destroy a card, it just doesn't get to pop anything, uh, which is going to curtail access to the Abominable Unchained Soul and thus the Unchained Soul of Rage. So a pretty strong Didi Crow here. Going to be a pass from there. And the top deck for Bird Up is going to be Jack in the Hand. Uh, this card is really fascinating because not only is it basically banned in remote duels right now, but also I'm just waiting for the day when we see this card in a mirror match. Uh, you know, if somebody in Bird Up activates this card and they reveal three, uh, your opponent does get to add first. So they get to have the pick of the litter, you know, if it is a mirror match. So uh, curious as to when I'm going to witness that happen. But regardless, it's going to be a pretty uh, decent consistency piece here. Going to activate it and then reveal three. Um, he definitely wants the Turquoise Warbler here since he has pretty much everything else already. Looks like his opponent's going to add the Nerval to his hand, so he gets to add the Turquoise Warbler, which makes his hand actually a lot more powerful than it was previously. So going to Special Summon the Warbler, since of course the board is clear, and then use the effect to summon the Cobalt Sparrow out of hand, and then activate Cobalt Sparrow, that's going to grab a search for Didi Crow. So he's on multiple Didi Crows here, which is also something to note. Uh, next, he's going to overlay those two for a copy of Assemble Nightingale, which is actually quite nice because this board is relatively sticky since both of these cards float on destruction via battle or card effect, of course. So going into Zeus is going to be a great way to just easily dispatch of that. Next, he's going to use the Sapphire Swallow and then summon itself as well as the Nerval out of hand. And then he's going to activate Nerval, but I think there's only one target in Grave, yeah. So... Uh, doesn't quite have access to those plays just yet. Instead, he's going to link away for a copy of the Baron Blossom, and it looks like the Nerval did get Skullmeistered. Then he's going to normal summon Didi Crow, and then link the Baron Blossom and the Crow away into a copy of Simorg, and then uh, uses the Baron Blossom, I guess, to draw and put back a card. I believe that was... Actually, I didn't quite catch it. It was a King of Bio, so I guess that was uh, just for fun. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to battle phase and attack with the Assembled Nightingale. That's going to deal 800 points of damage. And then main phase 2, going to go for Zeus. Again, very strong against Unchained, just in general. But notably, there's no Downer Magician, so we'll see if that comes up. Uh, Simor going to activate in the end phase as well. That's going to summon out Nerval from the main deck. Uh, definitely a good choice, just because the Barrier Statue isn't really going to do a whole ton here, because you can just force in the battle phase, uh, and then you're going to have to use Zeus anyway, which clears your Barrier Statue, so it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, you could, I guess, go for Apex Avium, but I think he also wants to play for next turn, since uh, right now he just doesn't have an engine, apart from if the Simorg survives, which if he has to use Zeus, it won't. Uh, so yeah, this is like the best option, I feel. 
So Unchained's going to draw for turn. It's a copy of Ice Dragon's Prison, which is definitely pretty good in this matchup. It's not like as insane as other matchups since there's like some, uh, some diversity of typing, but it's overall going to be pretty decent, I think. We'll see. Going to normal summon the Rakia, and then go to battle phase, and he's going to attempt to crash Aruha into the Simorg. Quite interesting. Uh, this does prompt the Zeus, which will clear the board, and then Rakia will be chilling too. So that's going to pop, it looks like, the Aruha, and then Zeus resolves, wiping the rest of the board. And then Aruha and the Nerval both get to trigger here. So because Entropy is turn player, the Aruha is chilling one, and then Nerval is chilling two to add Fractal. And then Aruha going to special summon the dog from the deck, the Unchained Soul Disaster. And then in main phase two, he's going to use said disaster. Yeah, see, actually, this is maybe a point where the downer could have come up because he might have considered using the other Zeus in the battle phase if he had a second activation there. Uh, but regardless, we're going to see the Zeus be linked away with the disaster into a copy of Unchained Soul of Rage. And then he's going to set the Ice Dragon's Prison and then pass term. So both players operating on not too many resources at the moment. For turn, the top deck is going to be the third copy of DD Crow. Yeah, pretty interesting. He does have Fractal, which is good to get back into the engine, of course. He's going to normal summon a Fractal, and actually, this is 1900 attack, so it could just trade very profitably with the Rage, since Rage only uh, can be used to link away with opponent special summon monsters. So we'll see if he goes straight to battle phase here. Uh, he does, so he's actually going to attack into the Rage. And then on attack declaration, it looks like Entropy is going to use the Ice Dragon's Prison in response. Uh, this is a Beast Warrior, right? I'm just making sure. Are there any Beast Warriors in the graveyard? There actually are not. It's primarily Winged Beasts. So there's actually not going to be a way to banish this Fractal off the board. Which is pretty noteworthy. So he's going to take the Simorg instead. Oh, changing his mind maybe? Nope, he's going to go with the Simorg. So Simor hits the board, and it looks like Fractal redeclared into the Rage. I'm gonna take 100 damage, and then Rage is gonna trigger to add back Rakia. But it looks like he's trying to use Didi Crow to banish the Rakia. It uh, looks like neither player caught it, but unfortunately, this is damage step, so the Didi Crow is not legal there. Unfortunately, um, yeah, that definitely could matter because this is an extra engine piece uh, that it would have otherwise not have access to. So. You know, these things happen, of course. Yep. It's good to know your rulings, for sure. Uh, damage stuff can be tricky sometimes. But Fractal going to be used here in main phase 2. That's going to banish 4. And then summon out a copy of the Shirag. And then Shirag effect is going to non-target banish the Simorg. So that's also an interesting kind of uh, play that happened there, is that eventually we kind of looked at the graveyard before activating this Ice Dragon's Prison. Uh, he maybe could have saved it for this point, uh, because Shirag is also a winged beast. So because he wouldn't have gotten value off the, or he didn't get value off the Ice Dragon's Prison basically anyways, um, if you waited to this point where like Shrag would attempt to banish presumably the Ice Dragon's Prison, um, then you could like chain Ice Dragon's Prison, hit a Winged Beast, and then banish both it and the Shrag. So that would be good. But he's just going to pass on this. Uh, again, both players are not in a like, fantastic position, but it's pretty decent for Bird Up right here. Uh, gonna top deck a copy of Heavy Storm Duster and shouts to DB's art not loading. <laughs> this happens sometimes. But that's not a good top deck. He's gonna set that in a monster and Don Bongo, if he's keeping track, should know that's the card that uh, he took with Jack in the hand, so he should know that it is Nerval. The top deck for Bird Up is going to be Turquoise Warbler. So, I mean, it's not amazing, but it's at least another Tri Beast. Going to go for Fractal here, that's going to banish three and then summon out Rugal. And then that triggers Shrag, of course, to banish, it looks like the face down Nerval. Uh, and this is 7,200 damage. I think that is actually game. Going to be 19 and then 23 and then, yeah, 3k. So Bird Up actually going to be taking this game number one here. Pretty interesting given how that game went. Um, the DD Crow misplay, of course, was unfortunate. But again, these things definitely can happen. Happens to the best of us. Uh, so now moving into game number two here, looks like Unchained is going to go first again. If you guys are enjoying this video, definitely be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here and want to see more commentary similar to this style. But the opening hand for Unchained going first this time around is going to be Escape, Prison, Ash Blossom, Chamber, and another Ash. So has basically a Ruha plus a Trap again. Uh, opening this card twice in a row is pretty nice. And then the opening hand for Bird Up going second is going to be Double Evenly, Monster Reborn, Feather Duster, and Barry Statue of the Stormwinds. Sheesh, uh, talk about breaking a board, but 
not being able to actually make one yourself. Yeah, this is uh, not a good hand. Gonna go and activate Abomination's Prison for the Unchained player that's gonna search for Aruha. And then going to set the chamber, activate the Aruha, target it, pop it, and then summon the Aruha. And then chamber, gonna special summon Sarama, no Ash this time around. Uh, Sarama going to activate, that's going to reset the chamber, and then pop Aruha, which triggers to summon out the Abominable, Abominable Unchained Soul. And then those who are going to be linked away for a copy of Enchained Soul of Rage, and then going to set the escape, and then pass. For turn, the top deck is going to be Ash, uh, right on time, as usual. Uh, yeah, this is far from ideal for Bird Up here. He's going to start off by activating a copy of Harpy's Feather Duster. That's going to wipe the back row, but both of them actually do float. So he's going to actually get two summons here, picking Rakia and Disaster. But then it looks like Tri Brigade Lurlesk is going to go into battle phase, activate evenly matched, and then wipe the board anyways. Uh, choosing to keep the Unchained Soul of Rage here. And then main phase two, going to set Storm Winds, and then set evenly matched, and then pass. Uh, that's about right. <laughs> uh, the top deck for Unchained is going to be Ice Dragon's Prism. So to be fair, Unchained doesn't have a ton of engine cards going right now either, so it might just be a slow roll for both players. He's going to go to Battle Phase and attack over the Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds, and then set the Ice Dragon's Prison in Main Phase 2, and then pass. For turn, the top deck is going to be DD Crow. Jeez, just need any Tri Brigade name. That is uh, not good. Well, needs more than that, ideally, but like Fractal would be decent. Uh, going to go to Battle Phase. Unless he's going to use Evenly Matched again, just effectively acting as an MST at this point. He's going to chain Ice Dragon's Prison in response. And then on resolution, Evenly is going to banish the Stormwinds. I like that a lot because it gets rid of the uh, like a Winged Beast in Graveyard. So that's just one less resource. Definitely not a bad trade. Uh, going to set Ash. I mean, it is 18 defense <laughs> and then pass. And then the top deck for Unchained. Oh, that's going to be Pot of Extravagance, of course. The turn you set Ash uh, is the turn that they draw Extravagance right afterward. So he's going to fire off the Extravagance. It's going to banish 6 and then draw Trap Trick and Escape. So that's not bad, because uh, this can help to trigger Rage's recycling effect. Uh, so definitely decent. Let's see what was banished off Extravagance. Axis Code, Phoenix, Rage, Unicorn, Rage, and Dingirsu. So no more, or no more Rages in the extra deck. That is something to note. This can't target... Yeah, it can't target a copy of itself. I'm just making sure. Going to go to Battle Phase and attack into the Ash. The thick 1800 defense. <laughs> and then going to Set 2 and then Pass... For turn, the top deck is going to be Apex Aegis. This is... This is not good. A little bit surprising that he kept both the Statue and the Apex Avion in going second. Uh, but not really sure about what the player's sighting patterns are, obviously, so we can't know for certain. Uh, he's going to Monster Reborn. So there's nothing in his own graveyard, I don't think. Yeah, so he's going to take something here. Probably the Abominable Unchained Soul, since it does have a non-target pop, which is decent here. Yeah, he's going to take the Abominable Unchained Soul, use the effect that's going to pitch DD Crow. And then in response, Entropy is going to chain the escape. So it's going to pop the Rage as well as the Abominable Unchained Soul. And then Resolution, the uh, Soul is going to pop Trap Trick. But not much else to do here. Uh, looks like Rage is going to activate to add back Sarama. Not much else to do here in terms of the... Uh, Bird up player. He's going to switch Ash to attack position and then attack for zero damage. I wonder if this is maybe just for memes. I mean, it's going to be hard to play out of this, to be honest. Uh, he's going to draw another copy of Sarama for turn. Actually, let me read Abominable Unchained Soul again. Uh, during the end phase of this card, it was in the graveyard because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn. Okay, so it doesn't have to be destroyed on your field. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the comments, but I do believe this could have activated. Uh, on the end phase of the last turn there. Um, and that would have been a nice body. Uh, not really entirely sure. But regardless, we are going to probably see the Unchained player win in the following turns here. Uh, going to normal summon the Sarama, and then use Sarama effect. That's going to reset the Aruha, and pop it, and then Aruha going to summon out Rakia from deck. And then battle phase... <laughs> gonna attack over the Ash that was switched to a trap position, and that actually would have been a nice blocker. Uh, so gonna attack for 3k total. Uh, main phase 2, okay, so it didn't go for the battle phase plays, where like you can Rakia pop like your own Sarama, and then Sarama to summon another copy of Abominable Unchained Soul. And granted, this would have beaten over the defense position Ash anyway, so it's not like that mattered too much, but 
Uh, I wonder if maybe a sec the second copy was cited out. Perhaps. Uh, I know most builds run too, if I'm not mistaken. But that could have been a play, as well as like just using the effect in the battle phase to like, pop through Ikea and then get more damage on board. And if actually this activated and was able to, uh, that would have been an extra 3k on board. So that probably just would have straight up been an OTK, um, which is something to note. But it's going to be a pass from there. And the top deck's going to be Turquoise Warbler. Yeah, just more cards that really do not help out in this scenario. And he's going to pass. For turn, the top deck's going to be the Transmigration Prophecy. A very, very good card. Um, underrated for sure. Uh, pretty good against Drytron. Uh, very good against Drytron, rather. Uh, good against Eldritch. Pretty good against VW. Um, and pretty good in this matchup, too. Uh, if you want to like preemptively deny resources. Going to normal summon the Sarama, and then use Sarama effect, and that's going to be the end of game number two here. So Unchained tying up the series one-to-one. -one. Very interesting back and forth here. Now let's go ahead and move into game three, where it looks like Bird Up is going to choose to go first. And quickly before we get started into game three here, just want to shout out my patrons as usual. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. The long form and consistent content is made possible thanks to you guys. If you do want to also help out support the Patreon, uh, definitely go ahead and check it out in the description box as well. But the opening hand for game three going first for Bird Up is going to be Turquoise Warbler, Keros, Reborn, Jack in the Hand, and Cobalt Sparrow. So this hand is very good. It has one of the notorious two-card combos I mentioned earlier. Uh, plus, like, just a lot more extenders and consistency tools, so strong hand. And then the opening hand for Unchained is going to be Nibiru, Ash, Prison, Aruha, and Trap Trick. He drew Prison all three games, by the way. Um, this is actually a good hand, because Nibiru Ash together is quite a strong combo. Because typically, you Nibiru them before they can drop Appaloosa, and then, like, if they, if they have a contingency plan, it's generally some more, and then you can, like, Ash that at that point. Whereas, like, usually if you open one of these, it's not going to be enough. So opening both is quite er, great there. He's going to go for Jack in the hand first. That is going to add Turquoise Warbler to his opponent's hand and then Nerve Vault to his own, which is quite strong, like even stronger than it was already. Uh, Turquoise Warbler going to be activated. That's going to use the effect to summon out the Cobalt Sparrow from hand. And then Sparrow effect is going to search for a copy of Sapphire Swallow. And then going to overlay those two into a copy of Recital Starling and then use the effect that's going to detach to grab a copy of Deity Crow. We've seen Dede Crow do work in this match so far. Uh, granted, one time was uh, an accidental illegal activation, but uh, in the turn one of game one, it was also very good. Sapphire Swallow going to be activated next. That's going to summon itself and the Nerve All from hand. And then the Sapphire Swallow and Star or Recital Starling are going to both be linked away for a copy of Baron Blossom. And then he's going to activate Nerve All. That's going to banish, uh, looks like three. Summon out the Rugal here. And then uh, the Baron Blossom effect is going to summon out Keros from hand. And then on that summon, he's going to use Nibiru. Yeah, definitely a fair time to do that. It was maybe a little bit risky to wait that long, but it definitely paid off because like that's a very, very devastating Nibiru. And, oh, looks like um, he forgot his search for Nerval. So that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, Monster Reborn, though, going to bring back the Keras. And then Keras is going to banish three, summon out the Simorg Link, and then going to normal summon Didi Crow and go into Link Rebo. And then it looks like he's going to pass in this. Simorg probably just going to get Ash, and that is going to be a rough one. Granted, the Barrier Statue wouldn't have been that great here since uh, all Unchained has to do is normal summon anything, and then there's two monsters to just beat over the statue. So probably would have got the Apex Avion there if I would have had to guess. Uh, but even still, would have been like a similar scenario. So, I mean, it's not like this was a great Simorg, given the fact that Nibiru is there anyways. But uh, we're going to see the Unchained player draw a copy of Abominable Unchained Soul for turn. He's going to start off by activating a copy of Abomination's Prison. That's going to grab Escape. And he's going to set the Escape, and then activate Aruha, targeting the Escape, popping it, summon itself, and then Escape triggers. That's going to... Oh, as well as the Abominable Unchained Soul, right? Because a card was destroyed by card effect there, so gets to special up. So the Escape summons the Surama as well, and then the Abominable Unchained Soul also can trigger here. So that's going to pitch the Turquoise Warbler to non-target destroy the uh, Simorg. It's great that this card doesn't target. Uh, Surama effect, that's going to reset the Escape and then pop the Aruha, and then Aruha activates for the Dog. And then Disaster Effect, that's going to link away with the token. Four copy of Unchained Soul of Rage. And then going to be thinking here, going to link that with the Sarama into a copy of Anguish. 
and then Anguish effect is going to link away with the Link Rebo into another copy of Rage. And then Battle Phase is going to attack over to Keros, and then attack for what looks like 6k total. And then the main phase 2 going to set the trap trick, and from here it is going to be not impossible for Unchained to lose this game. Uh, gonna pass, the top deck is going to be another DD Crow. Man, DD Crow actually being the top deck for this player a lot, like every single game. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely not going to do it. Uh, he's going to activate DD Crow, banish the anguish, and then concede. So Unchained taking this matchup 2-1. Uh, very, very fascinating stuff. These are two decks that I think a lot of people are fans of, actually. Um, so it's nice to see them play against each other. We don't see that too often. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were some misplays, I think, on both sides. Uh, there were some things that could have maybe been done a little bit uh, differently. But nonetheless, I think both of the decks' strengths were also displayed. Um, being able to like wipe through the board going second. like The hand traps obviously helped for Unchained. But yeah, just being able to plow through, wiping a lot of the board in the process. Uh, like We got the Soul Pop, we got the uh, Dog Link Away, we got the Anguish Link Away. So able to clear three monsters, which is like really, really good. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more foreign and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me with the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.